Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. In this episode we are going to try the ISRU units again and send them over to Mars to try and drill for stuff. Though I might try a hydrate one before trying the ore one. Let's uh, take a look at the hydrate situation. But before anything else I want to point out that persistent rotation is doing a fine job of maintaining the orientation of my probes the way I set them. Remember I set this uh, particular uh, scanner so that it was facing the sun and after all of our other activities in the previous episode it is still facing the sun. Uh, the problem is somehow we depleted electric charge even though we tested out the fact that uh, it shouldn't. And signal loss with tug and hab ship, that's our main ship. But, oh, that, that's a signal though, that's not electric charge. If that has electric charge, oh Loon scan one, uh, scan 1 is back. So the, the point is that um, we, we need to turn off the warning about the signal for that ship. Uh, this should never lose electric charge to any substantial degree. See, uh, even on the nighttime side it loses, you know, a trivial amount, a few hundred electric charge. So, yeah, that's, that's the thing. For some reason the electric charge is being drawn in a way that it ought not to be given our orientation is the way it is. So anyway, I just wanted to point out that that was the issue I was having. It's not the fact that uh, we're losing the correct orientation or anything, as far as I know. Uh, in the case of Loon Scan 1, uh, Loon Sat 1, I think it was, um, which was, I think, left edge on, I think over time it has simply, it simply happened to catch some sunlight. So let's take a look at it. These might be helpful for communicating from Mars as well, relaying stuff. Oh no, I thought it had said that it was back, but oh, maybe that was just Loon Scan when I'm confusing things. Anyway, uh, this probably was my mistake, I think, uh, since the orientation is off. I can't check whether I had told Persistent Rotation to hold it in the right or orientation. Smart ASS, I know about the Sun orientation thing, obviously. I think I've used it in this series already. Uh, to set the orientation ahead of time before tweaking it uh, and then getting persistent rotation on. But the problem is uh, in previous versions Smart ASS could not hold the orientation during time warp. Now if it can now that's uh, news to me I just didn't know that that was now a feature but uh, yeah that's why I use persistent rotation. Persistent rotation persistently rotates. So anyway but let's take a look at the moon and uh, last time I identified a crater that I wanted to land stuff in because it had ore and that's that crater right there nice and equatorial so not a bad location to start off but there is the hydrate option now hydrates are much less well actually uh, so the hydrates are sort of south polish 80% um, cut off not directly on the south pole there seems to be a belt that's equatorial as well. That'll be easier to get to if we want to. But uh, certainly less prevalent than the hydrated ore, if you will. But maybe more legit? I don't know. So we could aim for that. Now that involves two different sets of converters. The ore one is uh, basically my modification on the stock converter and the hydrates needs something that understands USI um, features. So I'll try and put the hydrates one together and we'll see if we can launch it and it'll be on a blue moon and yeah yeah hopefully this time we can drill and produce some fuel. Okay so we are launching our second ISRU testbed that's in situ resource utilization. We're going to try to make use of hydrates on the moon to convert to liquid water and then convert that to hydrogen and oxygen and then convert that to liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. It's a bit complicated but let's see if all our converters work. We've got basically a pile of them on top of this. And I don't know how it'll work out. Uh, this particular stack of converters is a little bit different from the one I had on the first attempt. Not that I got to try that out. Because we're going for hydrates this time. That one we were trying to drill for water. 
and hoping that it would end up as liquid water and then separating it out after that. Now it seems like there is a liquid water to water converter in I guess it's KSB Interstellar. So that's a little bit annoying. But fortunately we don't have to do that step. We would if we wanted to use the liquid water to supply life support. And I really don't think I don't see why there, that step exists except, you know, to differentiate liquid water from water vapor. We'll see whether I need to make a tweak concerning that. Because realism overhaul assumes that what's stated as water is liquid water. It's not assumed to be water vapor. So there's a complicating factor that uh, may need to be resolved between the two. Once the fairing separates, I'll talk about the actual converters that we have on it. Okay, getting ready for booster separation. Off they go. At least these separate cleanly. I had a decoupler between the blue moon and the upper stage here, so we should be getting the correct delta V reading. Okay, there go the fairings. So that's the overall delta V, remembering that we have to get into orbit around the moon and then land with this at the right location. So what we have here is this is a KSB interstellar converter and it should be set to take um, the liquid water. So we drill for high, oh no, it's set to take the hydrates and turn it into liquid water. So first of all, we've got to drill somewhere on here. Everything had to be pretty finely balanced using RCS build aid. So there's the drill. That's set to drill for hydrates. This guy, um, start hydrates processing, converts it from hydrates to liquid water. And then this guy over here takes the liquid water and electrolyzes it into hydrogen and oxygen. This is storage for the hydrates because we need that just in case, you know, they don't get processed quickly enough. So then that's the hydrogen and oxygen and then we've got the liquefaction array which liquefies hydrogen and oxygen so that it can be stored in the main tank here. This is a supplementary fuel cell. I put four solar panels instead of two this time and shifted things around. And uh, what else? Oh, I should probably shift this down in here. We don't want two stagings. Then again, it might do that because I just did that. Uh, whenever you change the staging order, it tends to misfire one stage. This uh, it's actually pretty heavy, uh, like just there. Yeah, it did uh, the action group twice. Okay, deploy extension, switch engine mode. Okay, so they're actually pretty heavy, probably heavier than they ought to be because this is converting a whole bunch of other stuff. If it was just a hydrate processing unit, it would be a lot lighter. I actually had to convert, I had to change the config for this. It originally only had a 2.5 meter one, but I didn't want such a heavy one because that one was three tons. So I made a 1.875 meter option. Add that to the configuration. So this is the 1.875 meter option. If you just use KSP Interstellar, you won't have this option. You have to add it to the tweak scale. So, and that matches this one. This electrolyzer did have a 1.875 meter option. Uh, it is about one ton. And then we've also got a liquefaction array, which is 0.75 tons. And then the container, which is a little bit. Altogether, uh, th the original on one of this was uh, three tons, but I think all of it combined is about three tons and a bit that we're trying to land on the moon. Got to make sure it's within the capabilities of this lander, though we could use this upper stage to help out. Well, it doesn't look like it has that much to spare, to be honest. It has enough to transfer and make orbit and maybe 200 meters per second extra. So not really doable. Okay, so we should be in a nice orbit for a transfer, a nice quick transfer. Not that we have to rush, 
the we've only like taken a month and 10 days so far and we've still got 400 days before the transfer window so we're not in any rush it's gonna take a few months potentially well definitely more than a month for the Mars ship to cycle out to a high orbit in preparation for exiting so we do have to plan for that so it's not like we can wait until this alarm and suddenly send it out immediately that's not how ion engines work fortunately ion engines are not the reason why I'm concerned about the electric charge um, because we'll be focused on the vessel while we're doing the ion engine burns uh, always <laughs> basically uh, so it's only the surface bases and you know assets that we leave in orbit around the moon and Mars that make me concerned about the electric charge and uh, in a comment somebody suggested Ampere I don't want to add any other mod that messes up with the electric charge until I figure out what's going on just adding mods to deal with it will only complicate matters uh, given that I already have a lot of things that are modifying how electric charge works especially KSP Interstellar so and Kerbalism too so yeah I want to take a look at those two, go into the configs and see what might be going on first before uh, before I do anything else. And probably um, within that, I'll find some way of figuring things out. If I have to like tell Kerbalism to quit uh, tracking the electric charge when we're not with a vessel, I might need to do that. That would be a last resort, but it is an option. It's a better option than adding something else into the equation. Let's get the solar panels out. I, I don't think we have enough solar panels to run this continuously yet. And definitely not once it gets to the nighttime side of the moon. The 14 day night. That pretty much requires a nuclear reactor. Or, you know, more fuel cells than we're currently carrying. So. Okay, and focused on the moon, hydrates, increased cutoff. I thought there was 80 somewhere. That's funny. Okay, well, this doesn't seem like the greatest orbit to approach those. I don't want to land at nighttime, though. By the time they come around, to daylight maybe this wouldn't be so bad in orbit we want the high point over here and the low point down here where they're gonna rotate and end up all right let's go over there we have picked up our satellites around the moon I'm not a hundred percent sure we'll have a great relay when we reach periapsis, but I think we should still be in sight of the Earth, so no problem. And selling fuel down. It's gonna be a very, very short burn. I'll keep thrall though, of course, but still. Come on, sell that fuel. Okay. Again, minimum throttle on this is, I think, 40%. Okay, that'll be fine for now. All right, well, geez, can I just keep the display up, please? All right. I mean, we could land now, but it'll be in darkness, and I'll be afraid of electric charge again. So I'm going to time warp and wait a while. And I need to tell it not to bring me out whenever we lose signal. And we see it recharging, a better recharge properly. We've got enough, not, I don't know if we've got enough solar panels to run all the equipment we have on board, but we've got a lot of equipment that draws a lot of power, so if it wasn't 
recharging properly now, we'd be in big trouble. All right, I'll be back with you once our target locations with the hydrates are in some sort of light. Okay, well, I just got a warning that LoonSat 2 is uh, running out of power. Been time warping here. Judging from the way it's turned, well, it didn't do go too far away from pointing at the sun while I was time warping, so that's good news. Smart ASS seems to be able to do that. We didn't have persistent rotation on, so it looks like Smart ASS is okay in time warp. Well, we'll assume for now. But anyway, I'll uh, leave this steady here, and I need to turn to LoonSat 2 so we don't lose it as well. It doesn't seem perfectly aligned with the sun. I don't know why the backs of the solar panels are facing the sun. That seems unnecessary. We have electric charge. Okay, well, let's execute sun down with RCS. I forgot, uh, Loon Scan 1 has the reaction wheel. This doesn't. Okay, well now it would be really handy if these rotated, as I thought they were supposed to, but okay, we'll 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 keep smart ESS doing it. Okay, so the entire patch we're targeting is now in light. The downside is that it's not really on the side facing earth. Right? It's definitely not facing earth. So we are at the mercy of our Comsats to help us out with this, and that's you know what it is. Let's take a look at how the Comsat situation shapes up over time. Signal loss of Loonsat two. Why was that just us, or is Loonsat two in trouble? We really need as many Loonsats as we can get in this case. If we weren't targeting hydrates, it'd be a little bit easier. Maybe the poll would have been easier too. Okay, well the fact that it needs to turn means that Smart ESS was not pointing at the sun consistently while I was away from the vessel. So, okay during time warp, not okay when I'm away from the vessel. So I think persistent rotation might be a little bit better. Otherwise it shouldn't have had to turn at all. Okay, and of course that uses more fuel, which we have a limited supply of. Anyway, uh, it's got electric charge, it's just blocked. Okay, well that's fine. I might have to cut down on MLI layers on this upper stage tank, because I wouldn't mind it boiling off a little bit more than it did over the course of 14 days. And of course, cutting down on the insulation means we can carry a little bit more payload. Okay, Lunsat 2. Nothing. Lunsat 3 is helping out here. Now, they should be in 6 hour orbits. We're in a little bit less than a 2 hour orbit. So, every, th every 3 orbits, the cycle presumably duplicates. or something close to it. So here we don't have signal. Here we do briefly, but lose it before we get to where we actually want to land. And on the third orbit, we have a consistent signal through LoonSat 3 across the place that we want to land. Okay, so first orbit, nothing, not good. And we will prepare for landing on this orbit. The sun issue is at least a lot easier with Mars as is communication with Earth because we don't have half of Mars tidally locked in Earth's direction or anything like that. 
so yeah both the power situation as well as the earth communication situation is better on Mars uh, that might be a little bit too low let's see uh, it's a little bit too low I do want this stage to crash into the surface to dispose of it though and we have regained communication thanks to Lunsat 3 as expected I would like to go more over the heart of this territory, so I'm gonna do a radio burn plus retro, and we'll do that when, uh, at a time when we will expend this stage. So right there seems like a good plan. Okay, I think we should be close enough. Let's start selling the fuel down. And here goes this inclination adjustment, basically. And separate. And let's change the camera while we're at it. And lower gear. Activate that stuff. We've got, well, there's some disagreement about how much we have here. Here it says 2,595 meters per second. Here it says 2,336. I'm gonna assume that this is right. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. Yep. Then again, I don't see why the stock version is incorrect either. There's no decoupler on here. Nothing to complicate matters. Not sure. Now there's a lot of craters around, so we're gonna have to. Actually, right around here-ish might be okay. Hold on, um, out of time more, please. Uh, if we focus on this, I don't know. Well, that looks flat enough right after that crater. Three minutes. Maybe we should get started. I mean, look at the... Uh, okay, well, first of all, we need to be retrograde. At least the thrusters are working and everything. Always important. And yeah, let's get started. So this is the B7 engine. We've got it at 40 kilonewtons, 452.8 seconds ISP, 10 ignitions. And of course, throttle throttle range of something or another. I don't know. I'm gonna have tell Mechjeb that I want to not that. Um, show line prediction. Pick target on map. Let me just target that area right there. I mean, you can see up ahead. There's some dastardly hills, some peaks. Gotta say, I don't know where this location is, but... well, I guess it must be right here-ish. Doesn't look great. I think we could stand to go a little bit further south. Is that this way? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to just land over there. Yeah, there's this smack dab in the middle, right? More or less. Okay, basically on final descent. I feel like it'd be prudent for me to retract solar panels just in case I do something horrible. Like bounce or land upside down or, you know, what I normally do on the moon. We're also a bit top heavy, so gotta think about that for a sec. Okay, looking good. All right, RCS off. So now will we get what we want? Deploy. Start hydrates drill. Well, 
there's some indication that we're getting hydrates. Uh, let's make sure we get power. Doesn't seem that drill doesn't take too much power, thankfully. Okay, we've got one one hundredth of a unit of hydrates. Let's time warp a bit. Uh, physics. Oh, signal lost. Well, signal lost should not stop it from drilling for hydrates, right? It should still do the thing. I don't know, it doesn't seem to be reacting to, well, is it really going faster during the time warp? I mean, this is, well, this is 50 times time warp. What? Shouldn't it be like a thousand times? Okay, I need to stop it from reacting to signal loss. I already told it to stop reacting to signal loss. Well, why are you reacting to signal loss then? Hmm. Now it's a thousand. Oh, oh, this says 50 times. It's still a thousand times. Okay, we've got a trivial amount of hydrates, but let's see if this part works. So start hydrates processing. Well, it says that we're replenishing liquid water. And all the hydrates have processed and been turned to liquid water. We're still good on electric charge. Now, electrolyzer. So, um, is this toggle refinery window? Okay. Water electrolysis. Whoa, 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 deactivate. Oh, God. Okay, that's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Um, we didn't even, well, we got some, some oxygen and had, or does that just boil off? Hmm. That consumes a ridiculous amount. It says consumed power 8 megawatts. Any way we could dial that down a bit? Power control. Maybe that's the deal. One. Maybe. But we don't have much by way of liquid water right now anyway. Let's let it replenish a bit. We haven't gotten a new hydrate bit yet, but uh, and we haven't gotten more liquid water. It's going to take a while. Uh, what I want to know is how quickly does it suck up the electric charge now that I set to power control 1. Still too fast. Still too fast. Mm. That's not good, is it? I need an alternate electrolyzer. And honestly, this one is way too heavy. It shouldn't doing electrolysis should not require such a heavy unit. Unless you really want to do massive amounts. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the tracking station and time warp and let it accumulate and hopefully we'll get a nice tank of liquid water and we'll see how long uh, I'll just time warp for let's say a week. Because then uh, this location will be halfway through its daylight cycle. Well, actually, you know, it's already because we landed a little bit long. It's already a bit. Yeah, we'll say a week. Okay. It should keep drilling. And what we're really uh, accumulating is liquid water. We'll see. Uh, well, Lunsat 2 is out of electric charge. That It didn't give me a warning about that. And Lunscan 1 is out of electric. Okay, I'm going to have to. Really? Okay. I was in the tracking station time warping and it said nothing about them being short of electric charge. Maybe I turned that info off? I didn't think so. Let's see. Uh, Config. I only turned off signal. I didn't say anything about batteries. So it should have warned me about the battery supply. And they're all dead. According to that. But I think maybe if we turn to it, uh, they should still be oriented right. But this is very annoying. Well, we can't do anything with this while they're out of power. Because, again, opposite side of the moon from the Earth. So no communication without those satellites. Um, still seems to be drilling. Didn't accumulate much liquid water though. For a whole week, 
0.18 units. That's pretty bad. So we might have to look into tuning things. Now that might just be the fact that hydrates aren't particularly rich in water, given I mean, depending on how they envisioned what hydrates were. Anyway, let me get some community. Let's see. Uh, we are currently here. Um, maybe Loonsat three should be the first one we check. Uh, oh, oh, it's well. See, MechJab definitely does not hold it properly. <laughs> uh, so this one was on Smart ASS, and it was backwards. Fortunately. It still had, uh, what you call it, MechJeb control, even though we had didn't have actual control. But I think persistent rotation really does do a better job. So I'm going to use that, and we'll make sure that stays the way it is. Let's make sure it's fully charged so that I don't have to get bothered for a little while. OK, well, we don't have a whole lot of units of liquid water, but let's see what happens when we try and convert it with this really power hungry converter that power control really doesn't seem to work very well does it well we've got 8.96 high oxygen and it should that's the easier one to track the hydrogen doesn't have the extra digits okay no jettison toggle okay okay uh just deactivate okay we got 129 out of that that's something Okay, let's let's check out the other steps. All right, so we got 129 out of only 0.19 liquid water. But then again, oxygen this is the the gaseous oxygen. So 200 units of that oxygen is one unit of this liquid oxygen. And let's just see that uh, the liquefaction array works. Doesn't take a tremendous amount of power. And it's taking the oxygen hydrogen. It seems to be replenishing the, uh, the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. But again, we don't have the extra two dig digits to verify. Maybe one of them will go up. Yeah, the oxygen went up from 229 to 230. The hydrogen should do as well. Let me see if the process works faster on time warp. Okay, it got to 740, but that was tough. Hmm. I mean, that's going to be limited by how fast this drills anyway. I think it's just this thing doesn't drill very well. <laughs> I mean, it says thermal efficiency 0.5%, hydrates 0.03% load. Those don't sound like very big numbers. So, yeah, maybe it's just down to our source itself. I think that's the case. This drill just doesn't drill very well. Is that because there aren't many hydrates here? Well, the, I mean, it is a bad amount that we saw on here. 0.2% fraction and the cutoff at, well, the cutoff didn't seem too bad. 80% cutoff. Well, this obviously needs some work, but we did manage to drill for hydrates and convert it to liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, just not much. So, yeah, let me take a look at the numbers and see what we can do about that. The prevalence of hydrates might be higher around Mars once we actually send a ScanSat over there. So maybe we don't have to do too much tweaking. We'll have to see what the numbers are around Mars. Anyway, this is basically what I wanted to get done for this episode, so I'll leave it here. And next time we'll continue building that Mars ship in orbit. And I'll try out my other ISRU method, which is drilling for ore and converting to hydrogen and oxygen using my own numbers. And maybe that will be a little bit easier. Uh, we'll see. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.